Good evening. We have a quorum. We'll call the planning board meeting to order. Um, just for information, Mr. Dwyer is not here tonight, so we have to call a quorum of the board. And we have no special permits we're talking about. We're just talking about general information and then with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. First up for general information is James and Jeanette Sester. Sector. Sector. Oh. Okay, what you got? Oh, This is uh, concerning the 8 French Street property. And Wendy um, was talking about being here. Right. He prepared the uh, survey that you wanted last time for us, so we got that done. That's the uh, large page. And it shows um, his proposed 30,000 square foot um, building on there. And most of the uh, references in here pertain to the uh, non-conforming aspects, I guess, of the existing lot as a whole. So the uh, this part of it, because it's so narrow and close to the road and to the water, there's not, you know, that's a pretty, it's already designated a non-conforming, like the whole rest of the street is. So this would be conforming because it has the right amount of space with the um, sewer and town water and all that already there. Um, so the question, I guess, is, would, changing the lot, but we're not changing the non-conforming, conforming? I don't know. That's okay, so that's some so questions. Okay. Is 1.97 acres, is the whole thing? The whole or, thing. What, what, okay, I don't so, know what you're showing this here. This is the um, number of square feet in this whole piece of property here. Okay. Not, not this, if you look at this map, which is the assessor's map, it actually shows the street. This is actually French Street here. Okay. But this survey is that the one on the corner that yes. maybe came in. Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yes. So this does not show the French Street Road, which cuts through here. So now you've got this little parcel here, which is this. Yeah. Road. This shows the whole thing. Right. Well, this, well, this is 47. This is no. Mount Warner. But this is Mount Warner. Mount Warner here. And then French Street comes along here. Like this is 47. This is 47 right here. Is this, this is, no, no. This is Mount Water Road. French Street. Mount Water Road. French yeah, Street. This is a river come, that comes, this is a road that comes off of that. Yeah, that's right. Right. Um, um, yeah. This, is, this is the river right here? Yes. What's, what's the address on that? I can write it. It's uh, 8 French Street. Exactly the way it is. North. Well, you know, you, you, north, north is this way. This is upside down. This is not Warner, and French Street is right here. It goes out to 47 over here. Yes. Yeah, right at the top of So, number one. Uh, this is not a survey property. This is a, from an assessor's map. No, this this so is the actual Randy, survey. Randy, Randy survey. Uh, uh, we we were don't, asking well, where's the stamp? I don't see the stamp. Um, I don't have the the actual. Income, so I don't have the actual survey, but this was the one that he took off the survey to show me the proposed. So the question was, can you get an additional lot in there? You're going to buy this piece of property. Uh, we bought this piece of property. And you have a house? This is the house. Yes. This is a garage. Correct. This is a shed. And this is a chicken. So where, where's the, now what about the, the dividing line? That's, that's the correct, that was the problem. It's a 
pre-existing non-conforming use if you divide this up and you're making this more non-conforming. Correct. And so uh, the question is, where does she want to make the dividing line here? And with this um, being the proposed, that whatever the setback from here would be, and there's the frontage would be on French Street, there would be plenty of frontage for both properties. So, so just in half, I guess. Well, you show that you could get the square in this piece of property, right. but this piece of property is not conforming. So right. by making the lot smaller, you're making a non conforming lot or non conforming. So okay. that's that's the question before us. And right. Randy was saying, well, he's going to confer with you and come back. And uh, so now you're coming back. And so that's the decision we have to make. Well, this is not a this is not a report before the ZBA. This is not something we can let them do it anyways. This is only variance. Right. But he wondered if we would be opposed to it. Yes. I wouldn't look at the uh, the site. Uh, you own this across the street. Yes. And if you, you know, it it does appear to have enough room for another house there. Uh, yeah. If you look at this map, which shows this is what's left of the piece across the street after yes. they ran the street through. Yeah. What did they, what did they have to do that? Uh, accessory land? It's they, one lot. One building. It was one. So that's accessory land. I have absolutely no problem. I kind of look at it as ur urban renewal for North Avenue. That, the front street is a kind of a... Yeah. We're working on the street. Uh, we're working on the house, and that's coming along for so over sure. Right. It's going to be an improvement out of this. But I want to make sure that you know it gets divided up in a way that makes sense. Well, Matt is a guy should, you know, he knows all the zoning and he can, he's a surveyor. The question is, can you build within? I mean, this requires a conservation commission. Right. Well, it's the top of the hill is is the. I was at the top of the hill. Right. Yeah, I mean, you're only the river. Maybe, maybe 75 yards away from the dam, right? I mean, the dam's right there. Um, well, he no, lives there. We're yeah, you're we're pretty far away. He's in the water. Yeah. It, 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 this is the old. Uh, that's the old pagoda house. French. Um, it's the old Bristville, if you want. Is that correct? No. No, that's where that's the dam is. That's on Mount Warren. Well, that's on Mount Warren. Yeah. So that would be. That would be this piece of property okay. here. Okay. Where's the dam in relation to this though? Right here? Yeah. Yeah. Right here. It would be right about here. This being the the book and the dam is right about here. Do you own right to the road here? Yes. Um, and across the road, no. No, no. I mean uh, to the north. No, there's a, there's, a, there's a lot right here. There's this lot. Is this lot here, 41, is this 30 foot wide piece? Yeah. This strip. We also own that. You own that? Yeah. And then this is about four feet to our, which was an existing barn, is there in our driveway and everything is right there. So that's pretty much where we start living. So this piece, we also purchased that, so we own this. <coughs> if we needed more to part <coughs> this over or twist it a little or something, we could still, you know, give up some of this without any trouble to make enough space over here. Lot 
is that it be a single family use only, no accessory apartments, and no business use because of the French Street and everything else around. That's not business only. No accessory apartment and no home they have no home business. That seems I'm thinking about how so you plan to build it. Right? You're going to build it, or are you just? I probably would just sell it to someone who was going to build it, and I actually. Well, see, that makes a complete difference, though, if he's going to sell it, because he he owns this though, so this lot. It's a tough call because this is going to be sold to somebody who's going to build a house there. The you just made a non-conforming lot more non-conforming. Well, does is, that other lot, that other part, go with it? No. No, so there's going to be two different lots. So what I'm saying is, uh, this, you're, going to, you're going to live here? No, we, we live here now. So this is a home that we're fixing up, possibly for one of the kids, if they can so you're going to sell this lot, and you're going to sell this lot. Yes, possibly. One of the things that we wanted to do, because we do live right here, was we wanted to, when we did present, was have a plan or whatever for the size of the house and stuff like that and have that be uh, like uh, restriction or what but so it could only be that big so it could build some huge thing there or something. Okay. So you said it's an issue if he's going to sell the lot and then somebody else build yeah. a house on it. If it's not, what if he built the house? If it's not. And then he can't sell it? Just the I house? He has to sell the whole thing? But common sense says sooner or later it's going to be sold to somebody. Yeah. It's going to be sure. Sold. So exactly. whatever, whatever. Even if you give it to his kids sooner or later, right. it's going to be gone. Likewise with this. Right. But the only concern with that is putting the have the ZBA put a restriction. It's like they can put restrictions. ZBA. They may not be able to. Can, can they, can't, they can't put restrictions on the zoning variance. You're right. It's either approved or not. Right. That is correct. Well, only a special permit can put a restriction on it. But I mean, if, but if he voluntarily came in, okay. But then if he came in here anyways, and we talked to him that you're not gonna, you don't want it, then. Well, we, what we can do is we can play let's make a deal here. Right. We, well, that, that's a good. Thing. We won't depose it if you voluntarily put restrictions on it. That these will be single family homes, never to have. An accessory apartment or any kind of home business for them. I, you know, because we live there, that's what I would want, anyways. Okay. So, yeah, so that's the best need per need restriction you put on it. Right. You put those on it, then I personally, again, I won't say I don't like, I'll say I don't like the idea, but I won't oppose it. Deal? As or good no. as it gets. Deal or no deal? <laughs> that's my deal or no deal. Okay. But I think it's going to be too. Putting any kind of addition. I mean, First Street is not the best of streets in, you know, around for. It needs for urban renewal. No. no. It's okay. not. Actually, that's one of its assets. It doesn't have. Even one. if they repay it, it's still going to be a very. Um, Slow, narrow. Yeah, you know, narrow little path. street. Right. Sounds sewer, so. Yeah. That's, yeah. That makes it somewhat. Well, oh, it was not sure. You had no place to put it. Uh, no. uh, almost no place to put a field in it. Yeah. That's right. But I mean, it's so close to the water, too. Yeah. You mentioned conservation fish, and is that your for the conservation fish? Absolutely. Yeah, because he, he, he had bought some water. He bought some water. He was within probably 25 feet of, uh, of, of the water. Mm -hmm. So they're probably going to say, well, your house is going to be, I'm not sure what they're going to say, so I can't tell you if you're thinking, you know what's a big thing. Well, what we'd like to do is put it in the upper corner, close to the road, because it has a really nice um, view of the Mount Warner Range there, where a voice processor field all of mode here. And it's beautiful in the morning. Anyways, that's our idea. That's not, uh, this is 150. So you've got to fit a house in there. You're just going to be a small house. Yeah. Because yeah. certainly the conservation commission is going to come into play. And yeah. it's the question is, 200 feet back, 
that's uh, a perennial stream by all means, and so you've got to be 200 feet away. Right. These are um, most of the houses on French Street. The three of them are currently 1,100 square well, that's, feet, something like that. That's, that's so that's what we were trying to go with something. Well, well you know what you, what you should do is go see Janet's uh, stone at the Ducey at the town hall and show it as planned and see yeah, even you before you could right. Don't even before you apply for anything, see what the conservation is. Mm -hmm. okay. like you're coming in to see us. Yeah. There are Tuesdays, Tuesday mornings. Yeah. The uh, first walk in the front door, right on the left. Okay. I think we did talk about her once already. Yeah. All right. Let's start somewhere. Okay. So oh, you no, want these? Okay. Okay. That's it. Thank you very much for coming. Susan.
One that is different is on page five, marijuana research facility. That was something that was just one sentence. I went directly to the CCC um, recommendations uh, and their definitions, and this is the definition that they had in there, and it is much more um, descriptive, I think. Is this the same as when you emailed to us? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. This, okay, so let me make sure. Yep. Okay. And What's the institutional that review for? Copy, yeah. uh, you know, uh, you're going to use human experiments, and uh, this could be a loophole. It should be the institutional uh, in research involving humans must be authorized by an, by right. the institutional so review board. Is that my understanding is any research university has to have that in okay. place. It's so a it would, it so have, would have to be a recognize right. institution as opposed to somebody creating it, their own right oh yeah yeah these are well established things yeah so it'd have to be an educational institution but not subject to the Dover amendment okay oh yeah this is then on page six i added outdoor marijuana cultivation and um, that is, of course, brand new because it was something that you folks wanted to consider. And I want to make sure that that makes sense to you. I thought I would keep it simple, but, and if that's the right name, that's all good. Section four on page yes. This thing, this outdoor, is there a minimum of a lot and a maximum? Yeah. Yes. Yes. The and that's still for right, all the state statutes to say, like, oh yeah, well we do have uh, for the outdoor rights specifically, and we'll come up later. Mm -hmm. Page seven. So we needed to adjust some things for the outdoor growing. Um, so here, you know, where they talk about all um, materials relative to uh, cultivation, etc., shall be inside or not visible. I had to put an except for. Yeah. And down below, ventilation. Actually, I don't think I highlighted this, but after ventilation, I added all indoor establishments just to clarify that. For a I, not the plan, but the very under use. Oh, yeah. The very first for, yeah, for a I. Any type of marijuana establishment may only be involved in use <coughs> permitted by its definition and they may not be in, may not include other businesses or services. Question on that is if a farmer wants to grow marijuana, mm -hmm. does that mean they can only grow marijuana and can't grow any other crop? That's no. no. I would not think so. That's not the way it's worded. Right. So what I'm saying is what a farmer so, needs two separate corporations, one for marijuana and one for farming. Why? Well, I'm, wait a minute, that's why I want right. to understand this. I want to make sure that we're not, we want to, what we want, the, the whole thing that we've got farmers that we're, they're interested in doing this, Right. but it's obviously not going to be the only crop they grow. Right, so this, of course, was not considering that. This was considering, you know, an indoor growing facility or retail where they don't want to have. So, but but that's not what it says. Right, you're right. I caught that on the peanut <laughs> ices. Okay. So, so um, it's for a one. Yes, yeah, okay. My, my, my definition may not include other businesses or services. I mean, we could add something about excluding outdoor. Um, cultivation yeah. facilities, or, or somehow word that I want that that to, that to me said like it seemed like it could have a big loophole. Right. What we want to do is say somehow include the words agricultural crops. What about just farm use? Oh, well, that, no, you not farm use. Agricultural, agricultural crops is actually defined in state um, statute. Agriculture is defined, except 
Mm -hmm. So I'm, 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 I'm just saying that I don't know if that is the right word to use, except right. for agri other ag excluding, agri excluding agricultural somehow. Excluding agricultural crops. You also want to be able to process agricultural crops so people peel squash and. Right. Well, that would all be included in the agricultural. And related. Agricultural, yeah, agricultural uses. Yeah. You know, uses. Yeah. Agricultural crops and related uses, something like that. Related agricultural uses. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. But just like a, 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 an appropriate yeah. word, way to phrase of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. About that a little, but yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. Okay. Anything else up there? No. Okay. We were just discussing before you showed up the, yeah. the how specific do we want to be in the security? Uh, right. And, and we kind of came to some agreement. We don't tell them to put a safe seven foot chain of right. fence with uh, matting on it so you yeah. can't see inside. Yeah. And, uh, so as we, we would have said, we would just say secure. Okay. But does that leave us vulnerable? Um, it may. You know, the state does have their own regulations. Um, it's helpful for you to have it in your regulations as well, so that it shows that you're paying attention. I'm sure that folks that come into public hearings are going to be concerned, you know, about security issues. Well, I, I'm, I'm concerned that somebody can say, well, I'll just put a snow fence around it. And uh -huh. Does the state have any security requirements on Holden and Grow? I but think they do. Yeah. I think they do, because I looked at that. Okay. The state allows Holden and Grow, is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Although they didn't include it, and in, oh, we didn't include it in our model regulations because obviously it's more complex. Right. Yeah. But what we wanted to include. Right. Yes. yes. So could we simply reference the state requirements on open road? By reference. By reference. Yeah, but why don't we look at that? Well, exactly. Yeah, give, 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 give us a copy. Give us a copy of it. I think if we just include it as reference by reference, as opposed to. Put in, if it's a simple thing to put in, but I got a feeling that it may not be. All right. Say if there's anything that. Uh, yeah, no, everything was really well. Say if there's anything in a paragraph. Yeah. No, 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 no. Okay. Well, you know, screening could be a roll call. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ye
cultivate their but the own whole, or whatever. The whole thing is this. What does growing marijuana invite? What does it invite? Does it invite people that are just up and up about everything? Well, history tells us a farmer in heavy was growing marijuana between the rows of corn and it was pick your own and they came to pick their own so the students from a nearby college pick your own pick your own corn you did not pick your own marijuana no, they'll pick your own marijuana and they left without paying and there was some bird shot through the window and there was some serious yes but so uh the corn was used as a screen uh -huh. yeah but anyway. well as we get you know to that section more i did leave some of those security things in, but I did take some of them out. I tried to make it simpler, so when we get to that specific section. Yeah, I really think there's going to be security. It's, it protects the farmer, but it also protects the citizen because yeah. what it's going to invite. Yeah. Well, I, you, you're right, and we were, as we were discussing before you showed up, the, uh, we want to get into the weeds. Right. The detailing every bit of security. Oh, because right. We don't ask them all how to be secure. So, uh, you know, right. they have to have some responsibility. Yeah. We, we will have mm -hmm. responsibility in our way. But that, that, not maybe with that. The other 10 uh, farmers, if you tell them, well, you're going to put up a security in their eyes that's secure, in everybody else's eyes, it's not so secure. Well, that's. that's that's the other point. That's why we. But if they want to get a license to grow from the state, they're going to have to show certain things. Yeah. Who, who's the enforcer? Enforce, enforces the state law rules. You bet your boots there's going to be a branch of the state police that will enforce that. I would imagine. So you our police don't have to ride around to growing, growing facilities to see or not. Well, well, they, they may anyway. Well, I guess they wouldn't be driving yeah, around. We don't want them to. We don't want them They wouldn't be driving around to ensure security. But if things start getting sold and broken into, right. Right. they're going to be yeah. called in. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You know? Right. Fences make honest people. If, honest. if you have farm plates, state police show up here my farm and uh, they want to see it's a farm, you have to have a, your sign. I mean, they're, yeah. they're pretty tricky uh, yeah. inspecting. They want to, sh you got to ride around and show them the acreage you're farming. Really? So, mm. And that's just for some plates. Mm. This is going to be a little bit more serious. Yeah, yes it will be. Okay, okay. Okay, should we move on to the next page? Page eight. Um, outdoor, golf, outdoor cultivation facilities, so you have a screen from visibility. So that was just a general thing in that visibility yeah. paragraph. Yeah. And then below in the location um, is where I added that, um, what does that actually be in the minimum? Yep. Uh, side and rear air why, why are you guys going by back so far? If it's secured, what the hell makes the difference? Hundred feet, that's a lot of farmland. Well, I mean, they, they can grow they can grow other things. They can grow corn in front of it or any other that means, in front of it. But if it's gonna be secure, what's the temptation of being right on the road? People have a tendency to pick sweet corn right by the road. They don't they won't go there's a fence there, they just uh, no, that's hundred feet really. I mean, I think there has to be some setback rules and regulations. If you want to make it 50 feet, I think 100 feet is reasonable. I think we should go with 150 like we've got. If we find out down the road we want to make it less, we can always make it less, but it's very difficult to increase something once you set at a minimum. It's a lot easier to reduce it. Right. You know, for lack of anything else, let's leave it at that for the time being because none of us knows what makes sense. All right, and what I did with that, um, number four, I had replaced the uh, previous number four, which was restricting um, these types of establishments, uh, any parcels adjacent to residential uses, and you had suggested taking that out because that would be very difficult you know, on a farm. And, mm -hmm. 
have like, things like that. So, um, so and then below, I there are some of the security requirements that I left in. Um, well, basically, um, notifying the various parties in town about you know when this um, establishment was going to begin operating and. Uh, general um, information from the managers of the facilities. There was lots of other people listed in there before I took them out. Yep. Is all this stuff that you collect in public information or is it not? Um, I would yes. imagine. Yes, it is all public yeah. information. It, should it be? It has to be. Anything that comes into the planning board has to be public. That's why we took out the whole thing about security. Because you don't have to, you're not providing this detailed information on security so you already can see it. As far as the owners and all the rest of the stuff, this is actually part of the application to the state. Right. We just want to see it also. And if it's a, if it's given to the state, that's all public information. So anybody can question yeah. if they want to. There's nothing, I don't see a problem from a, um, any kind of security problem or anything else by providing, giving this information. You know, who's the owners? Who's going to run the place? Who's going to operate the place? It's pretty basic, yeah. Yeah. And um, the next page in that same category, um, the last one there, number four, uh, contacting, um, uh, I put the I changed the context to the building inspector and it said, you know, a whole list of people that should be contacted if there was a concern. What page um, you I'm on page nine and number four there under D report. reporting requirements. I think that has said the planning board, you know, a whole list of people on the town. Since the building inspector is really your zoning enforcement person, it seems to make sense. Yeah, the zoning enforcement officer. Should, Should I say that? Is that the more correct term here? Yeah, okay. most likely. Yeah, so don't even think about okay. the zoning enforcement officer. Okay. Give the applicant 45 days with notice before taking any action. So probably zoning enforcement officer. Oh, there too. Yeah, the last one. Yep. Mm -hmm. Which one? Because oh, then I changed it above. Yeah, I'm yeah. there. Got it. To the applicant, we will only appear to put on the permanent satisfaction of the zoning enforcement officer at the top of yeah. page 10, oh, same line thing. 3. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably mentioned in some place if previous to this, the mm -hmm. building inspector, the zoning enforcement officer, probably would be the correct term. Yeah. It makes sense. Um, so then down under application requirements, G, uh, it had disclosed the names of the owners and managers and the board members and all the staff. And all. So I removed those things that you request and just kept in owners and managers. And then I also had removed the floor plan requirements, gates, alarms, all those kinds of things. And then you got to report anybody that works in that, on that facility? No. We took that out. We took that out. We just seemed like, to, what, what do we care who's working there? We didn't want to demand she models or not. That's available to the state, but they have to provide that information to the state anyway. Well, so. well, well, they're going to provide it somewhere it's there. So just, well, well, but there's people, somebody local isn't going to run into the state or anything. Somebody well, I mean, it's not more convenient. What I'm saying is, 
for the police, you know. Well, the police don't, issue. I mean, we don't ask for, in the mall, every person that's working for the mall. I'll, I'll talk to Chief Mason. Yeah. Okay. When I go see him, yeah. I'll get us out yeah. and ask him, yeah. do you want, what kind of information besides this, what else right. do you want within the zone bar? I'll give right. him a copy of this. What kind of security requirements, what kind of right. reporting yeah. information. Yeah. Available to, to the, uh, the police department, right? Yeah. Right. Sure. Yes. If he says no, then. Right. Okay, he has a chance. Right, so yeah, last one you might want to run by him to H there. That was where I had taken out the floor plan requirements case on our floor left and general proposed security measures, including lighting and messing. Yeah, that's very good. See if that's not for him. And general security. We're going to have fences, we're going to have cameras, we're going to have this, we're going to have that. What kind of booze we don't really care. Right. Well, they work. <laughs> That's right. You'll find out soon enough that they're working. Like we're on harvest time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and down the last one of that section on the next page um, individual written plans, which a minimum must comply with the requirements. Um, there was a whole list of things there, including um, operating plans, advertising, waste, transportation, energy. I took all those out and just left in yeah. hours of operation, yeah. security yeah. plan, yeah. Oh, very, very broad brush, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Maybe um, we're going to hours of operation now. The general security plan, like I said, <clears throat> we're going to have fence, we're going to have cameras, we're going to have this. Is there any smell from marijuana plants? At a certain, certain yeah. time of the year, I don't know how long the period is. <clears throat> it smells like skunk. Which happened you know, right? mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know that either. But I heard a few people tell me that that when you go in, go in, go into a enclosed area, mm -hmm. it almost always stinks because they have such a range of plants. There's mm -hmm. always some that are maturing at this. It's only a very short period of time. But when you're in an open world like this, you put it in a field, I think it lasts, I'm going to guess, about a week, maybe not even a few days. Um, even yeah, the, the, gentleman was, the gentleman was here, I don't know yeah, exactly. time. The gentleman was here with Joe Sankoski from the, uh, one of the last meetings that we had. Yeah, like this. he was He said that the period that he was in older is very short. Mm -hmm. Um, like an open road facility, because like I said, they've got so many, they try to get maturing one after the other. There's always something being matured properly. So the place has a constant odor, and, it's, and he said, yeah, it's, it's all that stuff. Let me ask you something. So when they, is this like a one-time crop, like tobacco, or yes. is it just one crop early, one crop? No, it's one crop a year. Well, if you're growing it outside, the frost is going to be the limiting factor. <laughs> if you're growing outside, it's one crop a year. And in fact, right now, it must be maturing because the police helicopters are flying. Uh, yeah, it, it, it has a very similar um, row coordination, if you would, with tobacco. It's very similar to that. It's, just, you know, it's got a flower, it's got this, it's got that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if it's, it's, you plan it out, I, I don't know the exact numbers, but it's similar, similar to tobacco. Well, yeah, you can smoke it, you can chew it. You know, um, <laughs> well, you, you you talk about you get some experience with that. I mean, I don't know nothing about it. Well, I, I've never you, blown this. You know, it was amazing. I I couldn't even run for office because I didn't partake. When we got out of uh, dental school, it was considered a felony, so it, you would lose your your dental license uh, back then. So you're not going to risk that. You mean what if you did drugs? If you did marijuana. If you did marijuana. And marijuana is a Schedule I narcotic still under the federal law. So it's along with cocaine, heroin, marijuana. So that's... Uh, I know a lot of people that have grown it that they they talk about how it grows. They're very simple. They, they say, how do you know it's like tobacco? That was the general comment that they used to say. Um, if you want to see a plant growing, go in the cemetery in North Hampton. Oh, it'll be gone by tomorrow. It'll be gone by tomorrow. 
it's a long, it's kind of, it's kind of, almost looks like a skinny throwing leaf. Uh-huh. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
We're ready, we are? We're not? We're covered. Okay. Okay. Isn't, isn't uh, Rider Valley uh, sponsoring some of those uh, housing? Yeah, there's okay. trust, some of the housing, just housing. September 20th. Rider Valley and, and uh, Franklin County, right? September 20th. Right. Yes, I've heard a little bit about that. Yeah, Bill said Very little. Yeah. Yeah, Bill said it up. That sounds right. Though. September 26th, Amherst, Affordable Housing Trust. Same thing you wrote last year, wasn't it? Well, that, that was fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same place. What about that thing at Toby Cross? What is that? It's on Monday, isn't it? What is that? It's on Monday.
um, legal notice that are appearing in tonight's newspaper and two weeks from tonight, or next week. For the um, public hearing we have on Phil Shumway and two lots of benefits subdivision on the 18th of September. Just the way the Gazette is now streamlining their bills as they're sending out an approval of the legal notice and they're sending out an invoice at the same time. They have had a real disaster with the invoices. I have spent quite a while with a town accountant um, last week of our bills that went back to I don't know, May, March, whatever it was, that we paid and they said we didn't pay because they put it against the wrong account and yet the account that has the invoices and the checks that we paid what we're supposed to pay. So she's trying to get that up. Did you submit the bill for the money? You did. But that was also the not being paid. And um, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not <laughs> I'm never had success with the Gazette the money. The, I want to say, since the beginning of this year, they must have had a huge turnover in health because things are so jumbled. And I left there with the account account. She said, I will make the phone call. She said, I know what I need. I said, okay, I won't get involved. You got, I gave her all the bills that they said we were overdue. And she said, we paid that, we paid that, we only owe that one. Okay? And that's, so anyway, we have the, uh, this one right here, so I'll let you a motion to pay 223.28 to the Gazette. So, second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. This is approved. Motion passes. Thank you. And. Did you find out the amount for that? Same. We have another one for our quarterly. Our third quarter pay for the planning board, total of 575. Entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Normally we're weeks to getting that in, so we'll get out of the game on that one.
We wanted a certain appearance. But what is that appearance? Well, so we, we, we appointed a committee. It was myself, um, I think, Margaret Freeman from the Historical Commission, um, Kevin Michelson as a business person. It was like, I don't remember who else was on it, maybe about four or five people. And we wanted to both prevent, if you would, a mall from being built in that area. So that's why the 12,500, we, we took a one acre lot. And if you have a one acre lot, then well, both the many lots through this section are one acre. Mm -hmm. So we figured, you do all the math, the maximum size building you can put on a built on a one acre lot and still meet zoning is about 12,500 square feet. Mm -hmm. That's where the 12,500 square feet comes from. And then for appearances, we wanted to have, you know, clapboard type siding or horizontal siding, um, you know, mullions in the windows to give like an old colonial style look. A pitch roof as opposed to a flat roof, and shingles on shingle appearance on a roof so that does, does, looks like a the two of us are a house as opposed to the we didn't want we wanted to do what they wanted to avoid we wanted to avoid was a buckler metal style building being built in this area mm -hmm. the standing metal seam roof and vertical siding both represent kind of standard for metal, for metal buildings. Then how did they get? permission to do the town hall and the senior center with a metal roof. The, 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 the senior center has changed to a shingle roof. They, they pulled the plan on standing metal seat. Or, or this building. This building. Yeah. This building has metal seat. This yeah. Yeah. See, the building inspector allowed them to do that. There was a clause in, and you can talk to him on this, there was a clause in the Village, in this village overlay district overlay bylaw that if you spend more than 30 percent of the assessed value um, upgrading the building then you must comply with the village overlay district guidelines if you spend less than 30 percent of the assessed value of the building on uh, upgrading the building then you don't need to comply with the village overlay district that's the way Tim took this, and he allowed standing metal seam roofs on that. Right, wrong, or otherwise, you can talk to him on how he allowed it. Mm -hmm. okay. My point is, I never had heard one person complain about the metal roof on this building and the metal roof on the town house. Not one. Okay, and, and uh, I'm simply saying that I, I, I personally like standard seam roofs. I'm, I'm talking about the bylaw came into why, effect. Why do you like them? Because they last longer? This is going to last a long time, maybe two years? No, this is $50,000. This is their stupid plan. $100,000, right? But that's. Uh, as, as far as, as that's how the bylaw came into the bylaw came, came in effect. In what was the gentleman's name that lives up near Barstow's? Uh, that was on the early post uh, No, no, um, Tom, no. Oh, he's not CIA guy. Oslin, Oslin. No, no, no. no. Oslin. Tom. He lives on Malcolm Road. Right? Yes, oh, yes, yes, yes. That's Tom. Tom, Tom uh, begins with an M. Mm. He's, he's, on, he's on a long way building committee, or he was. Yeah. Well, anyways, they, the uh, the historical commission was fairly active in, in revamping this. And, yeah. And so, you know, those, those were all, we, we talked about the same different things in the committee. That's how it came about. Town meeting voted on it. It was agreed to that, from the, like I said, from the bridge to the Mill Valley Road, that would be the general appearance of new buildings, <coughs> new business buildings that went up. Houses were exempt. And, you know, standing metal seam roof, it was just the idea that that's typically a buffer style building. And. The buffer style comes off. Uh, well, this was before, when this bylaw was put into effect, a standing metal seam on a roof was virtually unheard of and very, very expensive when you did see it. Now, it's a whole different ballgame, right? It's a very 
very common on, on barns, on cars, on all its and it's good. Well, it's yeah, the, the, the price has come, it's, it's, it's a whole different, it's, it's look, it probably 15 years later anyways, when, when it was adopted, the things have definitely changed. McGee. Tom McGee. Yeah. Tom McGee. Yeah. So, you know, I don't have a strong feeling one way or another about it yet. Um, yeah, I know. You know, um, nothing. Yeah. Anything else? Anything else? Okay. Adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye